Welcome to The Good Work, a podcast and video series that follows The Event Company, an event design company that specializes in corporate, nonprofit, and social events. Our passion lies in creating one-of-a-kind events that share the good work of organizations we are fortunate to collaborate with. Tune in for conversations with leaders of these great groups, our best advice for your next event, and some behind-the-scenes moments. Now, let us show you the good work. In this episode of The Good Work, the event company will break down the social media platform every event planner loves, Pinterest. Pinterest is a great resource for finding creative new ideas, but all of the information can be a bit daunting. We will discuss how to navigate the site, our thoughts on DIY, and how we like to use Pinterest at the event company. Please welcome to today's podcast, Addie, Maddie, and Kat. Well, here we are again, ladies. Welcome to the vodcast. Hello. Hello. Whoa. Ooh, hey. Unison. Oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I kind of have this love-hate relationship with Pinterest. I saw your eyes. You're like looking at me like, what is she going to talk about <laughs> with Pinterest? What do you guys think? I agree with you c- completely. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about Pinterest today. How we use it for planning, how our clients use it for planning, what we ever did without Pinterest prior to. Some of these new kids, young kids, looking at you, mm. Maddie, <laughs> Callie, Pinterest is all you know, right? We looked yeah. it up the other day. How long has Pinterest been out, though? It started in 2010. Whoa. So about eight years old. Wow. I feel like it's been around my whole life, but it hasn't. Yeah. I mean, I remember using like wow. magazines, cookbooks, but... I love that you said cookbooks. I love cookbooks for my birthday. You guys all bought me this awesome yeah. keto cookbook, yeah. and I love cookbooks. Yeah, They have to have pictures, but I do like cookbooks. But yeah, I'm one of those old schoolers with that. But years ago, we used to use magazines for mm-hmm. planning. <laughs> uh, whether it was Better Home and Gardens, we got great tablescapes, good old Martha Stewart living magazines, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, bridal magazines for just decor things. And yeah, that's what we used were magazines. We didn't yep. use too many books, but Mm-mm. magazines for the most part were used. But now we've got this awesome button on our cell phones and our computers called yeah. Pinterest. Yeah. There's a lot of information on it, though. Like It's I think, overload sometimes. Yeah. I think yeah. I feel like that like, it's a little overwhelming for me because you have to be so precise in what you search and keywords <laughs> yeah. and descriptions. And maybe it's just because I've had a, an experience or two. <laughs> Maybe I'll just share it. So there was one event uh, that they came to us and we were looking at centerpiece ideas, tablescapes, whatever. And she said, I don't want any floral. No floral, which we don't really hear too often. But no. No. this one client said absolutely no floral at the event. And we were abiding by those wishes. And first we're like, oh, OK, that's not a big deal. And then we start looking and 10, 12 hours later of my time, I think maybe I finally had a few options. <laughs> and it's different because this event was a very specific themed event. So it mm-hmm. wasn't just a standard dinner party, very themed, but it was also um, a little bit higher end event in that respect. And our client has kind of specific style, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is awesome. But it was, I think, very difficult for us. And we went to the drawing board. We created a, a design board from that, showed it to the client. A couple things were plucked off of that I think the first round list. was kind of plucked. And yeah. then we had to go back. But Yeah. It does make it pretty difficult because you cannot just search not well i'm sure you can non floral centerpieces but you may come up with like a hodgepodge of stuff that just does not fit the client right exactly and sometimes it'll just pull just floral and all of a sudden you do have floral or centerpieces you know so you just have to be mindful of what you're searching you are so right that there are so many different categories on pinterest you can search i use it a lot for recipes you know i still love cookbooks but we use it for a lot for recipes we find centerpieces floral designs clothing choices Mm -hmm. there's so many different things that you can utilize pinterest for we've got a lot of boards on our page some are public but a lot of them are private because these are private events that they don't want guests to see what's unveiling for the Mm -hmm. night of so some of them are private but we invite them as collaborators of the board so they can kind of get in and see and they can pin their own pieces right. as well, mm-hmm. which is nice. But there is a lot of info on there, and it could be overwhelming. What would you guys say are some of your kind of beginner tips of Pinterest? And the reason why I say beginners is we had a client last September 
who had not even had a Pinterest account, which to us we were like, oh, like <laughs> faux pas, like no Pinterest account. And she was a younger gal as well, but it was a social event and no Pinterest. So we kind of had to walk her through it, you know, but I don't know. So what would you say are like some of your beginning beginner steps of creating a board for an event, let's say? Yeah, I think organization is key. Yeah. So depending on you thinking of in advance of how much you plan on pinning of breaking it down into maybe certain categories on top of just a board so maybe that's having multiple boards oh that's or a good idea breaking it down of where one's just floral one's just food. decor that food, way you don't whatever. have one board for one event and, and you it's have like 400 pins and yeah one. you have to search through that all the time would get a little overwhelming i think so that's yeah. my first tip what about you maddie i would say learning how to search would be the number one hardest like what thing. Is that? I don't know what that means. So like when you're first starting out on Pinterest, you can't just search recipes because <laughs> you'll get absolutely every recipe you could ever think of. So you have to be very, you have to know what you're looking for, which mm -hmm. is sometimes really difficult, especially mm -hmm. if you're trying to get just a broad, you know, amount of ideas. So if you're looking for specifically non- floral centerpieces you have to kind of learn how to search like what words what keywords yeah. to use Break to find yeah. what you're actually yeah. even looking further for. of and we were doing silver we were doing by yeah, color exactly. we were doing by material so we were trying to like specific. google materials that we were looking super for. specific would be a good one yeah yes. yeah i agree and i think it's always hard because sometimes you like you just said maddie you don't know what you're looking for right or what words to even put in there. The fun part about Pinterest is, um, for those of you that are not good spellers, Pinterest doesn't care. No, nope. no, you just says we. Do you you got to be with. Do you mean the, this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. Pinterest is very <laughs> friendly to those non-spelling B people out there. Yeah. <laughs> Pinterest is really awesome. What I also like is that. For us, when we're kind of creating our own boards on there, other people throughout the world are utilizing things that we put out mm -hmm. there too, which is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this to toot our own horn because I think we don't, I don't think we do um, the best job of putting our own pins up there. I would agree. You know, yeah. we just get so wrapped up in our day to day with our clients and busy work and we are more, um, we're social in other aspects, but people when they are finding your pins out there it's fun to be able to see that because i'm right. like oh they actually like what we did right right and it's vice versa that's kind of the fun sharing piece of it but yeah so i guess we talked about boards maybe we should describe a little bit more for our listeners what a board so, is what a design board is yeah so um sometimes you'll see in media will portray this in a movie or whatever but you see a event planner or whatever come in with this huge board of mm -hmm. materials and that's basically what we do we yeah. just kind of break it down digitally, digitally yeah because it's difficult for us to find swatches of linen colors or you can't get an actual replica yeah. of a floral design sometimes we'll have those pieces but not always yeah our we just right. finished up an event and we, our friends they really deal were they, so awesome yeah, they, they really us. wanted actually to see the linen so i yeah. had to go in and grab napkins of the multiple colors that we were kind of looking at for them mm -hmm. to see so um but we just put it together digitally of where we do like a color um scheme together mm -hmm. um some of our ideas for floral or decor and the um, digital piece of it is nice because then that board once it's approved those design boards we share it with every vendor that we're working with which is exactly. nice because you may be planning that event with the marketing company or their marketing team and then you're being able to share that then with the executive team right so they get the mm -hmm. full vision and you're sharing it with florist and your lighting company all of those different pieces so they can really kind of see the true vision of what you're trying to accomplish and the nice part about pinterest is it's a it's used for inspiration right mm -hmm. uh, i mean we've all heard of like the hashtag of pinterest fail because people do try to replicate a lot of things that are on there i mean recipes yes i would totally right. get that right but sometimes we had this conversation with chris hints recently from pinnacle productions um, that you, if you show somebody this awesome Pinterest image of this gorgeous draping and this elaborate lighting, and then you're going to go to them and say, yeah, we can certainly do that, but it's a hundred thousand right. dollars. Like that's where right. the Pinterest fail part comes in. Cause you try to replicate it yourself, but you just don't have the means or the budget resources, whatever it looks like. In my case, or probably talent. artistic talent. <laughs> <Or> talent. <laughs> You're super creative and talented. But like some people, like I always joke when I see people's Insta stories or Instagrams or even Snapchats where like hashtag Pinterest fail. Like they try to make this gorgeous cake and it's like lopsided and <laughs> yeah. fell over. You and I did a recipe recently. Do you remember that it was oh. from Pinterest? We did this brownie recipe. Yes. For me, it didn't turn out 
as well. It got better with days. <laughs> so it's sat brownies. Which seems awful. Weird. Really odd, I know, like but... it shouldn't. So I shared them with the office. You guys are like, those are bomb. They were so good. But it, they were so bad the first day. Like they were like chalk. <laughs> like I don't know how. So the moisture in the refrigerator, something, some God miracle made these brownies better. <laughs> you made them oh. though. And they were like a crumbly. And I love baking and, co- and you know, crafts. I That is my jam. But I made these brownies and I took one bite and I was like, that's the grossest thing I've ever tasted in my life. I had to throw the whole pan away. That's oh, sad. It was sad. But if that's the Pinterest fail piece yep. of it, you know, like not or and I think sometimes why recipes fail, this is just my own intuition, is that they forget an ingredient, right? Yes. Like, oh, I forgot the baking blame soda. Well, you're the not, recipe. Yeah, huh. or, or blame it on or the recipe. In my case, it was like <laughs> Oh, you know, I can use this instead of that. It'll work out fine. Oh, no, the switch. Yeah, follow no. the recipe, Maddie. You're not a chef. <laughs> but Pinterest has helped us in a lot of ways of like how to remove peanut butter and candle wax and Cheeto crumbs from <laughs> a table runner, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, granted, we've never had that all in one table runner, but Pinterest is awesome for that because then you get your ideas and your ideas and mine and someone from Hawaii and Guam yeah. and all over the world of right. how to yeah. get these things out of different things. And it's killer. So yeah. it's why not share? the resources through that way. I think it's awesome. And sometimes it's like our muse almost in a sense (laughs) too because it stimulates your own like organic thinking. Like how many times have we seen a pin? Yeah. And then everybody's like, oh, wait, what if we do this? Like this fits better. And then all of a sudden it it stems from that, but it's not that, but it's stemmed. It's the spark for us. So you're talking about there was one event um, that we did uh, this spring this spring and it was from Vogue Mexico do you remember this yes they had this killer photo lounge area where it was like a walk-in acrylic box and it had the front of the magazine cover Mm -hmm. Vogue it was Vogue Mexico and they had um, the images of the magazine cover on it and it was all in acrylic it had like sides it was awesome so we loved the idea our client loved the idea we searched out two different vendors to build us that acrylic box and it was seven eight thousand dollars oh whatever. my god so that's the whole thing of dream big right <laughs> right but you don't know what pinterest is all going to be cracked right, up to right, be because right. it, it was so incredibly expensive we didn't end up doing it fully like that we had our other spin on it spin on but it, it helped yeah. kind of uh, mm-hmm. get those creative juices flowing mm-hmm. in that respect. But yeah, we've used Pinterest a lot yeah. in that respect. How do you um, how do you coach clients into using Pinterest? Because sometimes we've had it where we create the board and then all of a sudden your client's like throwing 700 pins on there and you're like, oh gosh, like it's hard to know because they see things that they like and then they're like, oh, I like this and I like this and I like this and I like that. Um, like invitations, for example, they may like this style of invitation, then all of a sudden you have 17 different styles and you have no idea. So how do you coach clients in that respect, Callie? Um, I don't know if there's really a great answer, but <laughs> yeah. always, I think first and foremost, always saying that it is just a guide. You know, right. the replication process is really yeah. just not always going to happen. But then also I always try to think like I should be open-minded and really take into consideration what they think. So how can we somehow merge these two ideas together to make one? So I, I love guess it. that's kind of my my best tip for that. Just open communication, I feel like, in that sense of just... It is a guide. It is a guide. It's a and guide. we had really great experience in utilizing it as a guide for... We had a, a graduation celebration this uh-huh. last May where we utilized some paper flowers. Mm-hmm. And we tried to work with local vendors to be able to help us produce them. And we knew what they should look like and kind of designed this flower wall, which was mm-hmm. cool. The vendor ended up not being local, which was kind of a bummer for us. But yeah. we utilized different resources that we had. Plus, we spliced in all of our own creativity. Mm-hmm. And it was a pretty awesome wall. And this yeah. this young gal now has it in her dorm room yeah. she loved it so it's much cool. which is pretty awesome so cool. to be able to do yeah but that was a true like merge of one idea on pinterest yeah. and some collaboration with vendors and our just our own creative thinking to a project yeah. one so. client that i absolutely love who loves pinterest as much as we love pinterest is sarah tweet from south yep. dakota soybean yeah. yes so she loves pinterest and i love that she loves it because sometimes um we may not be able to meet as often as we would like with her because she's traveling or we're traveling but when we see different things that we want to incorporate in our uh, in the hungry for truth the farm to fork event Mm -hmm. it's fun because she can put things into there that she sees and we have similar visions so we're putting things into there and it's easy to say yep that works or nope that 
it's not going to work. And to be able to kind of merge their ideas with ours, because some people are super visual, which Sarah mm-hmm. is. Yeah. And I think that's why we've had such a successful partnership with those events is because she knows what she wants and we have similar vision and we're able yeah. to kind of utilize both of those things that we find together on Pinterest. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. They're... Um Hunger for Truth is very, uh, I say visual, kind of like oriented, but yeah. their marketing, their branding, everything is very just design kind of focused yeah. and it's beautiful. Clean. Clean. And so beautiful. it makes, it's very important to them that the event matches that as right. well. And she always has a very direct theme, which in essence mm-hmm. makes our job easy too, but it's very Pinterest friendly always. So, yeah. But it's nice to be able to utilize those and to collaborate of what it yeah. should look like right, and what yeah. it doesn't look like. And then you would just add our own spin on it. Right. That would be my one big, big piece of advice is it's not going to look like that picture. Nor do you – I probably wouldn't want it to look like that no. picture. You need to put your own spin you on be things. be authentic and your authentic. own. You are absolutely correct, Maddie. And why do you want to be, like, looking right mm-hmm. like the Pinterest people? Right. You know, I mean – yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of fun to be able to do your own thing. This is totally off topic, not even on our agenda today. But have you heard of the pinning place in Sioux Falls? I actually have. Yes, I, I just I found out about that. I don't segment. know why. Yeah. I just but you can put your Pinterest things into use there. Like yes. you can pin things, and mm-hmm. they have little classes. Like there's a yeah, chef who's doing a that. class coming up. Of, oh, it sounds it's so called the fun. Pinning place. It's a maybe, genius idea. I think. Maybe we should uh, check it out sometime. A little field trip. Should. I love Pinterest. <laughs> I will say that you know, over the years, I haven't been as big of a fan of Pinterest just because I'm still pretty old school in that respect, and I still yeah. will see magazine things that I rip out, and that's just my passion part of it. But it's also fun to be able to utilize those pieces for bits of inspiration to kind right. of get the juices going, you know, in that respect. But yeah, and it's fun to see what happens all over the world. Yeah, right. You Definitely. know, we've got friends who plan events for HGTV and Honda International, and they're doing just different things in all these different countries. And it's fun to be able to pull them all together and say, oh, that's cool. Look at what they did. I know we did an event for, we talked about a couple times, but the University of South Dakota, we did this event in April for uh, President Abbott. People, so I shared that with some of our, our boards and different groups that we're a part of, and they were starting to ask questions about how you do those things. So it's fun to be able to kind of share share the good work exactly. that you're doing exactly. on those things. So I don't know. I guess me person, not much of a DIYer myself either though. So maybe that's why Pinterest, I don't know. It's more of an inspiration place for yeah. me, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I don't, I've had a few Pinterest fails and like art things. So <laughs> I just, we have the recipes, you have the art. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've always wanted to make those, um, those le- there's like a lemonade stand out of pallets i've had that thing pinned oh, for so many years now so i told drew this summer i'm like we're gonna do this well it's now october <laughs> november like we yeah. have not built that pallet board yeah, lemonade it's another thing that's hard about pinterest there's like so many good ideas yeah. that you're like i want to try them all yeah, but there's not enough haircuts yep. oh I mean, yeah there's so yep. many things on there i've but- got like my next five houses planned out because of, there's like <laughs> oh, so good. many ideas i don't even know if i'll ever be able to yeah drew wildflower construction hey, here's my 700 i've pins. got a lot of ideas <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. well i love all your ideas thank you again for sharing all them the fails even do not make any more brownies from that recipe nope. i'm pretty sure they forgot an ingredient <laughs> um but it's always fun to be able to incorporate them into planning pretty awesome parties yeah. so go pinterest it's a great resource go pinterest, go pinterest. Well, Maddie, I think you've been patiently waiting. Maybe waiting is, I don't know if that's the word, but oh. for your power round, Here we've we been go. kind of like Ooh, slowly. I like calling it a power round. We haven't done that yet. Have we called it the power round? I the guess I've round. been calling it the power round. Oh, I so maybe it. it was just me. I just say top 10, but maybe that's David Letterman style. I Why don't, don't you start it off? So we've heard um, these answers from different groups and clients, and we've heard each other's little... Yeah, but you're the last one. You're the last one. Ooh, I'm nervous. I'm excited. Okay, So you already go. know what we're going to ask yeah. you, which is awesome. But we want the first thing that comes, um, pops into your head. Okay. Don't judge me on my answers, because there yeah. is no judgment here. Maybe you should flip up the order. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, yes. And she okay. won't know. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. No? Okay. No. You right. go. Go, Callie. Maddie, what is your favorite color? Pink and forest green, tied. You like forest green? Oh, I, like, I love huh. it. I know that you were olive green, but I have never seen forest green. Love it all. Green, not lime. You, <laughs> wow, what color do you <laughs> On wear? myself. Oh. On myself. I would never wear lime green. I Says the girl who bought us a color-coordinated branding, <laughs> like matched our colors of a broom the other day. <laughs> green, lime, green, broom. What is your all-time favorite movie? Oh, 
which Harry Potter are you gonna say? Oh my gosh, that's what I <laughs> oh, yeah. like. Harry this Potter. This girl I don't is know. like, I okay. I just started Harry watching. Potter, all of them, mostly number four because I'll get to that in a minute. And uh, Titanic. <laughs> Titanic. Oh. <laughs> over and over and over. Love, love, love. That movie is long. Yeah. Yep. Good for you. <laughs> okay. And go. Yeah. What would be one song on the soundtrack of your life? Oh my gosh. This one is probably the hardest. Um, anything by Post Malone. Shout out to Posty. <laughs> Love him. Um, and I just, oh, I, she, I don't even know oldies. who this Posty Malone man is. I You've just taught us all these things lately. I think I called him like Pablo. Pa- you called him Pablo. I was yeah. listening to Pablo on the way in. We were all like, what? <laughs> She's like, Posty. Oh, Post Malone. Sorry, Posty. I mean, I'm a fan now, but okay. I had no clue who you were. <laughs> he understands. What is your favorite time? He understands. <laughs> Favorite time of the year, Maddie? Winter. Oh. Like okay. you like the snow or the oh, coldness? Oh, I love the snow. I cold. love the holidays. I oh, yeah, I, I love mean, cold. I'm hot all the time. So winter is like your ideal your time. Okay. What is your favorite place you've traveled? Um, I just took a trip not more than a couple of years ago with one of my best friends to New York City, mm. and it was very fun. Fun. Very fun. Good for you. Yeah. Favorite aisle in the grocery store? Ice cream. <laughs> if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Mm, I think I would like to make, if you're having a bad day, I would like to know exactly how to make it better. Oh my gosh, that's, that's a, a good, good one. one. Just to make people happy. Such a good person. Gosh. Such a good person. <laughs> gosh. <laughs> if you could share a meal with one person, living or dead, who would it be? <laughs> J.K. Rowling or <laughs> Robert Pattinson, who is also in the Harry Potter movies, but he is also Edward Cullen. So <laughs> it's like, that would be the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> if you could eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ice cream. <laughs> what is your best piece of advice? Just do what makes you happy and what you love. Good one. That's good. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you again. Thank you. I'm so glad that you're a part of this team. Oh, me too. Me too, me every too. day. You too, Callie. I didn't forget Jinx. about you. <laughs> Keep on pinning, ladies. Every day. We Pin will. it all. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of The Good Work. We hope our discussion today will help you utilize Pinterest in the best possible way. You won't want to miss next week as we introduce you to Renata McCain from the First National Bank in Sioux Falls to talk all about the wonderful things they're involved with the Sioux Falls community. As always, don't forget to subscribe to The Good Work on YouTube and iTunes and follow the event company on social media to stay up to date on the good work we are part of each day.